Hello. Wonderful. Thank you so much for bringing this over. I really appreciate this. I'm Bill Hammack. John Monroe. Great. We're going to shoot a short video about this. Just take a few minutes. Just look right here. So I have with me today John Monroe. Excuse me. Where's the bathroom? Before you get started. Out here, to your left, down the hall. Well, it's the most amazing thing that he brought, and I don't think it can hurt to look at it when he's out of here. In fact, I can't believe that I get a chance to actually play with this and look at this. He's brought today the first transistor ever made. This device gave birth to all the computers, cell phones, and electronic gadgets that we have. And one of its inventors, John Bardeen, was a professor at the University of Illinois. And he donated this transistor to the Spurlock Museum, and they've been kind enough to loan it to me to show to you. Now, this vintage 1948 electronics magazine shows all three inventors. And Walter Bratton built the actual device that we're looking at. It's amazing to see this iconic invention. The heart of it is this black metallic looking chunk here. It's a piece of germanium, it's a semiconductor. And you've likely heard of insulators which don't conduct electricity and metals which do. And semiconductor can be switched back and forth between being a metal and an insulator. This switching allows it to amplify a signal. Here's what I mean. In 1948, Bardeen and Bratton hooked a microphone up to this side of the transistor powered by this small battery. And then on this side, they put a large battery. The signal from this small battery passed through the transistor and was amplified using the energy from this large battery. Now, that's exactly what still happens today. In your cell phone, the transistors get a weak signal from a tower. They amplify it so you can hear it. Now, I know this looks far too big to use in a cell phone, but because this is just a solid chunk of germanium, it has no moving parts, so it can be miniaturized, it has no warm-up time, and it's extremely reliable. In fact, a computer today has millions of these transistors. Now, there's one thing that I've always wanted to do. I want to see if 50 years later this still works. Hi, uh, do you have another of the transistors? Hey, what do I smell? Is something burning? 